Hello everyone and welcome to IoT for All's Ask IoT video series where we are focused on bringing on experts from around the industry to answer the most popular questions, discuss the leading topics that come from our audience, their customers, their partners, conversations that they're having that we're hearing, um, and, and and create a new series, create something that is, is hyper-focused around those questions and those topics um, uh, as standalone pieces of content that we hope you'll get a lot of value out of. Today, we have Hardy Schmidbauer, the Senior Vice President at Kodelsky IoT. They are a company that focuses on helping IoT device manufacturers, manufacturers design build, operate, and sustain secure connected businesses. Um, today, our topic and focus is around uh, provisioning of IoT devices. So how to efficiently and securely provision IoT devices. So we start off by just telling, talking about what does it mean to provision an IoT device? Um, how is it currently done? Issues with the current process? How to do it better? Um, and, and things along those lines. So, so all, all, all good stuff here. Um, very interesting conversation for a topic that I, we often hear a lot about, talking about provisioning devices. What does it mean? How does it work? But we really don't dive into the detail uh, to answer that question thoroughly enough. And that's what Hardy is here to do. So without further ado, I really hope you enjoy this episode of IoT for All's Ask IoT video series with Hardy Schmidbauer. Welcome, Hardy. Thanks for taking some time to chat with me today. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show again. Absolutely. Yeah, this is... Um, this is one of the first episodes of a new series focused around hardware and IoT, so I'm really excited to have you on as a guest and uh, talking about uh, provisioning of, of IoT devices here today. Uh, why don't we kick it off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself and, and, and your company, just uh, to kind of catch anybody up who may be unfamiliar. Sure, great. Yeah, I'm Hardy Schmidbauer. I'm Senior Vice President of Kodelsky IoT. Uh, I joke Kodelsky is one of the, the largest companies that nobody's ever heard of, but it's uh, mm -hmm. roughly a, a billion dollar corporation, which is focused on security and technology. And specifically, we have a lot of uh, security products uh, for IoT. Uh, we do a lot of uh, device evaluation across the IoT industry and also have uh, solutions for in kind of ensuring operations um, and security of large scale IoT uh, deployments. Fantastic. Um, so today's conversation um, is around the how to efficiently and securely provision IoT devices. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you if you could just at a high level um, explain to our audience what it means to provision a device. Because um, we've heard things like zero touch provisioning and just generally provisioning of a device. But what does that exactly mean and how does that kind of fit into the entire IoT solution? Sure. I mean, it, it seems like a, a simple concept, but I think it uh, it's much more difficult to implement in, in practice. But, you know, every device uh, that gets produced in, in IoT, um, you know, needs some uh, unique identity um, or unique key um, so the device can be, you know, added into uh, a network um, efficiently. So that, that process of, of adding a, a new device into a deployment or a network is typically okay. called uh, provisioning uh, from, a, from a high level. And take us through how it's currently done now, um, and then I'd love it if you kind of expand on the maybe issues or challenges with the way device provisioning is done, um, and and who within the the process usually handles that. Is that usually the device manufacturer? Is that the um, the, the company deploying this themselves? Is there a systems integrator involved? Who usually plays a key role there um, in how it's currently, uh, or I guess historically, been done? Sure. So I think the way that it's mostly done today is I think a, a lot of the responsibility falls on the, the contract manufacturer to, to manage kind of giving each device um, a unique ID or, or a key. Um, so then the problem is that information has to be passed on, you know, through the entire uh, distribution chain um, of the device until it gets to um, its end owner um, and whoever is going to deploy the device. So typically, a lot of it did done, is done today in Excel files of, you know, the contract manufacturer will say, you know, he, here is the device ID. They'll send that back to uh, the, the uh, manufacturer. They'll also send it to distribution. Okay. Um, so then it's the distribution starts to be responsible for, okay, company X bought these set of devices. These are the keys that they need for, for their devices. So there starts to be a lot of handover um, of the keys and the protection um, of the keys throughout uh, the deployment and the distribution chain. Um, so it's it's a kind of a difficult process to manage, right? You're having to ensure the the handover of that information across yeah. you know multiple different companies, um, and then 
you know, it's also a, an operational challenge because companies can't uh, add the devices to a network without knowing the, the keys and ensuring that they are the, the correct keys sure. um, as well. So there, there's a big operational component to it of, of just efficiently assigning the keys, uh, distributing the keys and adding the devices into the, into the network. Um, but there's obviously, in addition to the operational side of it, there's also a security uh, side of it because, you know, at any point in time, if those devices fall in the wrong hands then those devices have potential to be compromised or companies can start to add in devices into uh, their network that are not really owned by them. And, you know, by, by definition, really, you should only be able to have, you know, one device in one network and, and not right. be able to have it replicated across uh, different devices that also starts to cause, you know, operational and security issues. So let me ask then, um, even though they're, I mean, obviously we're talking about these operational and security issues, why, in, in your opinion, has this kind of been the way it's been done for, for so long? Obviously that'll get into the next part of our conversation, which is how to do this more efficiently, more cost effectively, et cetera. But just generally speaking, why is it this kind of been the way, way things have been kind of done in the past? Well, I mean, I, I still think a lot of you know iot is just now hitting scale right? and i think it really becomes a, a problem you know once you really start to to scale um you know in in high volumes and i think you know we're, we're a little bit behind of where everybody projected and and where iot would be in in total volumes but i think right. we're uh reaching that that now and i think companies didn't know how to do it better um which was also uh another reason why it's been done uh, the way it's been done for for so long Absolutely. Um, so then let me ask you the other side of that, that question, which is how should device provisioning be done? Or I guess, what is the approach that you um, recommend companies kind of go down? Basically, what I'm asking is um, how do we more efficiently, cost effectively and securely provision devices? Um, and then how does this new way kind of compare to the old way? Sure. That's a that's a great, uh, great question. So I mean, to, to start with, there needs to be a, a secure, um, efficient way to to generate uh, the keys, right? Um, and then, you know, ideally, you want to get rid of, you know, all of the handover uh, through the distribution chain um, of the the key information, right? Because you know, every handover, it's a it's a security risk, but also just an operational uh, kind of headache uh, that companies have to, to deal with. So ideally, you want kind of efficient generation of the keys um, at the time of, of manufacturing, and then, you know, kind of seamless, easy deployment um, and provisioning of uh, devices into networks on the other end with, you know, as minimum uh, amount of handover um, of the information uh, through the distribution process. So what uh, we have developed uh, at Kadelsky um, is to is to give the devices generic keys um, at the time of, of manufacturing. Uh, so that becomes very easy to manage uh, for your for your contract manufacturer. They are not responsible for generating the keys, protecting the keys uh, throughout the the manufacturing process, or really in needing to hand over uh, that through the the distribution process. Um, as well. And then as the, the devices are, are then provisioned or added into the network, then they are able to, to get their, their secret keys um, so that they maintain uh, security and, and unique identity um, as they are deployed in the field. So we typically call that in-field provisioning or, or zero touch provisioning to where you know, there is no kind of um, handover um, of the key information, and we can securely basically give the, the unique keys at the time of uh, deployment and use generic keys up until that point. Fantastic. Um, and talk to me, just like expand a little bit on kind of the benefits of doing that as it relates to a lot of the points we were talking about earlier that were some of the challenges, some of the hiccups, some of just the issues with... Um, the way it was being done before. I know we talked operationally, we talked yeah. logistically, we talked security-wise. Um, so just, just tell us a little bit more what this enables. Sure. Well, I mean, I think it it really ensures, you know, uh, efficient operations, you know, as, as you deploy and as you right. mentioned. Uh, because, you know, it, if you're doing a deployment and you don't have the, the right information, typically that, that stalls your deployment, right? And then you have people in the field, you have costs, you have customers that are upset. Um, because, you know, you are not uh, being able to fulfill your obligations on, on the de 
the deployment side. Right, right. Um, um, so there's the operational side of it. Then there's also the security side of it, um, you know, which I think is becoming, you know, a bigger and bigger topic in, in IoT is, you know, how do I ensure the security of that device? How do I ensure that that, that device has not been compromised, it's data right. secure, and that that device is unique, right? That nobody's uh, able to try to replicate uh, mm -hmm. or, or mimic um, that device. And, you know, if there is a, a compromise of the device that you can identify it and uh, and quickly uh, resolve it, you know, while the device is in, in the field. So I think it also has huge impacts to, to really validate and ensure the security um, of the devices as well. Great. Um, one of the last questions I have before we kind of wrap this up is when uh, people out there listening who are um, involved in the provisioning aspect of, of devices for a solution at, at any given stage, what advice do you have for them as they're thinking about how to um, uh, approach the device provisioning prop part of, of their solution? Uh, or maybe they already have devices in the field. Is there a way to kind of switch between the old way of doing things into this new way? And, and what does that look like? So just any general advice for how people should be thinking about this going forward? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you, you know, you really need to think about it, you know, from the, you know, initial phase, initial architecture, you know, mm -hmm. of, of your uh, solution and, and your deployment of, you know, how are you going to manage that at scale? Um, and I think, you know, what also a lot of people underestimate is, you know, what, what is the, the cost of, you know, what we're doing today, right? I mean, sure. you need, you know, HSMs, you got to have people uh, trying to do this at the, the contract manufacturer. Um, you need people uh, in operations to try to make sure that it's efficient. And then right. if, if you do have any kind of a uh, mix up along the way, you know, what's the, the operational cost um, of that? Um, of have, trying to resolve that uh, in the field. Um, so I think, you know, the biggest advice is, you know, you really need to architect it um, from the beginning. Um, it's very hard to fix later. Um, Absolutely. So it's, it's very important to, I think, architect your solution properly uh, from the beginning and, and have a, a good plan of how you are going to deploy um, at scale mm. and resolve, you know, any of those field issues at, at scale um, as well in the field because you also, you know, obviously don't want to be sending uh, people out to try to uh, reprovision or reprogram uh, devices once they've been uh, deployed in the field. Sure. Absolutely. And and just out of curiosity, how does this, um, it sounds like this process really is beneficial for deployments uh, at scale. Is this something that it sounds like needs to be kind of not just thought about, but also implemented, tested, and kind of tried during the pilot stage as well? Or is this something that's really more thought about once you kind of get into the scale phase of a solution? Uh, no, I mean, I think it's it's important really through through any phase of, of the project, right? I mean, sure. you know, how you, you know, efficiently add devices into um, the, the field. But I mean, I think you would want to always test this, you know, as you pilot or, or trial as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because your, your pilot or your trial, you know, should re reflect your deployment at, at scale, right? Should right. be a mini version of that. So I, I think it's important to to test it uh, throughout the uh, the deployment and the design process. Fantastic. And for audience out there who wants to kind of dive further into this, better understand more information about device provisioning, maybe even kind of look into and learn more about how you all are handling it um, and your offerings, what's the best way to do that? Stay in touch, follow up kind of thing. Sure. Uh, there's information on our uh, website uh, about uh, Kandelsky IoT. Uh, we will also be at an embedded world if uh, companies are going to be at an embedded world for uh, scheduling appointments uh, to meet with our experts on the topic um, at embedded world as well. Fantastic. Well, Hardy, obviously, it's always a pleasure to have you. Um, thanks so much for joining us. I know we have some plans to do some other content, uh, talk about some other topics, get you on uh, another episode of the podcast, talk more in depthly about a lot of these things that you all have going on. So really appreciate your time. I think our audience is going to get a ton of value out of this one. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Looking forward Thank to you. the next discussion. Thank you. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching that episode of the Ask IoT video series. I hope you found a lot of value in it. If you did, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps others find it and make sure that you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, if you have any questions or topics that you would like us to cover in this series, please leave them in the comments or shoot us an email at hello at iotforall.com. Other than that, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.